Hi everyone, in this video I want to go over a very special book on real analysis. This is the book by Royden. This is the Royden book on real analysis. Now by real analysis here, we mean measure theory. This is a gradual level book on measure theory. This is not like undergraduate uh, advanced calculus. This is typically what a first year graduate student in mathematics would take. Typically they would take two semesters, you know, Real Analysis 1 and Real Analysis 2. And this is a book that's often used at universities all over the world. This is an absolute classic. Let's take a look inside this awesome book. I just wanted to show you how beat up my copy is. I've had this book for a long time, and I think the person who had it before me must have put it to good use. I mean, the pages are so worn and yellow. Look at this, this is just amazing. There's a lot of history in this book. I wonder how many people actually use this book to, to learn measure theory. Even some of the pages are taped together. There we are, H.L. Royden, Professor of Mathematics, Stanford University. That is an awesome school. Uh, it's one of the best schools in the world for mathematics. So the book was originally made in 1963. So this is a 60s math book. And this is the fifth printing, 1966. Really, really old school. There's a dedication here to John Slavins. This is the preface. Let's read part of it together. This book is the outgrowth of a course at Stanford University entitled Theory of Functions of a Real Variable, which I have given from time to time during the last 10 years. It was designed for first year graduate students in mathematics and statistics. It presupposes not only a general background in undergraduate mathematics. So in other words, you have to have, you know, all of the typical undergraduate courses, but also specific acquaintance with the material in an undergraduate course uh, in fundamental concepts of analysis. And then he goes on about how, you know, the material is covered uh, a certain way. And it's pretty standard. It's a pretty, pretty standard treatment. He does give like a table of dependencies. So like it tells you what you need to read before, you know, topic X, Y, Z. So here's that table I was talking about. So it kind of tells you, you know, how it builds on it on itself. So you definitely have to have, you know, the first two chapters. So you can read, you know, section or chapter 11 if you follow this path down down the diagram. That's a lot of mathematics, by the way. I, you know, when I say it, I make it sound easy. This is not an easy book to read. I mean, this is measure theory. This is the real deal. This is the prologue to the student. I think it's kind of interesting. Let's at least look at the beginning of it. The book covers a portion of the material that every graduate student in mathematics must know. For want of a better name, I denote the material here by real analysis, by which I mean those parts of modern mathematics which have their roots in the classical theory of functions of a real variable. Then he goes on to explain what he means by that. These include the classical theory of functions of a real variable itself, measure and integration, point set topology, and the theory of normed linear spaces. Then he goes on and talks about how the book is divided and some of the prerequisites. Here's the table of contents. So it starts off with set theory, as most math books do. Then it goes on to the theory of functions of a real variable. Then Lebesgue measure. Then it discusses the Lebesgue integral differentiation and integration, the classical Banach spaces. Then it goes into part two, which is on abstract spaces. So you have metric spaces, which typically the reader is familiar with uh, stuff like this. You know, if you're, if you're studying or reading a book like this, you've had some exposure to a lot of these topics. Topological spaces, again, something you probably have already seen if you're using this for a course. Compact spaces, again, mostly uh, review. Bonnock spaces, again, something you might have seen if you were studying this class. Then part three is on general measure and integration theories. We have more measure and integration, measure and outer measure. Talks about the Danielle integral and mappings of measure spaces. And then there's a big bibliography, index of symbols, and then the index, which is quite useful. 
This is the introduction, and this book reads quite well. I really like how it reads compared to some of the other measure theory books out there. It says, one of the most important tools in modern mathematics is the theory of sets. The study of sets and their use in the foundation of mathematics was begun just before the turn of the century by Cantor, Freg, I, don't know, I think it's Freg, Russell, and others. And it appeared that all of mathematics could be based on set theory alone. And it talks about some of the downfalls of set theory and how it really uh, is not so simple. Even though it was intended to be simple, it ended up not being the case. Here the book talks about the axiom of choice and infinite direct products, and they do a really good job. And you know, I probably should mention that even if you don't have the prerequisites for this book, you can still get this book and you can still try to read it. What's going to happen is that you're not going to understand a lot of what you read. And that's okay. And I, I think this is a really uh, unpopular view, you know, to say, hey, it's okay to read something and not understand. Um, if you go into it with that mindset, if you pick up this book for a few dollars and you go into it with the mindset that you'll understand maybe some of it, that's better than not understanding any of it. And you'll get more from reading this book than you would have gotten if you didn't read it. So uh, something to think about next time you read a math book. Really good book. Here, Royden talks about the general Lebesgue integral. I'm getting I'm getting goosebumps here thinking about this book. Um, the, I have a lot of history with this book. You know, the pages are yellow, and a lot of the yellowing, you know, happened before I picked it up. But I've spent a lot of time, you know, reading parts of this book and struggling to understand little bits, bits and pieces of specific topics. Um, analysis is, is not an easy subject. And uh, this book, uh, you know, it does a pretty good job uh, trying to explain something that is very, very difficult. One of the downsides of this book, and this is not something that is unique to Royden, that's very common in, in uh, all real analysis books, or in most at least, is that there are no solutions to the exercises. Um, that is quite unfortunate. So um, you're stuck trying to do it on your own, which... Which is okay. I mean, at, at this level, in theory, you should be able to do it on your own. And if you can't, um, you just have to keep trying. And what I always did was I always collected books. You know, the more books you have, the more examples you have, and the more proof techniques uh, you pick up, and the better you get at it. So I think it's always good to have several books on a topic. The index of this book is quite good. I've used it uh, extensively. I uh, used also the book by Folland and the book by Rudin when I was studying uh, measure theory. Formerly, uh, my class used the Folland book, uh, but I picked this book up immediately at the recommendation of one of my friends in grad school, and I'm glad I did. Uh, it's really useful as a reference, and it has really, really nice examples. This is the chapter on metric spaces, so if you're an undergraduate student in mathematics, um, this is a fun chapter to read which you might actually be able to understand, especially if you've had some exposure because, you know, if you already know what metric spaces are, uh, this section is just review, um, or most of it is at least. So it's a good place to start if you're feeling like, hey, I want to read something from an analysis book and actually understand it. Uh, why not start with something that you've seen before? It's a, it's a good confidence booster. Here, Royden talks about uniform continuity and uniformity. I actually have... Uh, videos uh, on YouTube about uh, uniform continuity, although uh, the proofs I have done in my videos are not in metric spaces. This is a proposition which uh, I've proved before and shows up in most books. Let F be a uniformly continuous mapping of the metric space X into the metric space Y. If Xn is a Cauchy sequence, then F of Xn is a Cauchy sequence. Yep, so uh, really simple uh, proof. Not too bad to do, and it's a good exercise. So, um, a really good book with really good statements and propositions and theorems and definitions laid out in a really organized way. This is a clean book on real analysis. The size of the book is just right. Um, it's nice to hold. It's not too heavy, not too big. Um, my copy is very, very yellow. Let me smell this. Oh, I wish you could smell it with me. This, this is an old book and it's an old classic. If you're thinking about getting into real analysis, or thinking about studying real analysis, or if you just want to have some exposure to the topic, I highly recommend uh, you pick up this book. Again, the book is Royden, Real Analysis by H.L. Royden, and Royden was a professor at Stanford University. This is a 1960s 
real analysis book. Again, this is graduate level mathematics, first year graduate school for graduate students in mathematics. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck and take care.